Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Ham 101. I'm Herb in Z0F. In today's episode, we're going to talk about some related topics that all center around the letter Q. Uh, you may have noticed or may have remembered it from your license study, uh, from your test, and from uh, other conversations you've had as a ham so far, uh, that there are Q codes. And these are three-letter codes uh, that all start with the letter Q. It goes back to back in the early 1900s when the only way to communicate was by Morse code. And so these Q codes were created as kind of shortcut language for longer phrases. And so there are a number of Q codes that are in general use today in ham radio uh, that cover a wide variety of things. And you will, uh, you may remember that back in one of the earlier episodes that we did at the beginning, uh, we talked about the fact that we don't really use these Q codes uh, on the air much on two meters and 440, which is where you know new technicians are going to be hanging out. Uh, but you will hear them, and so it's kind of important to understand uh, what some of the more common ones are. So we'll run through some of those. Uh, the first one is is QTH. Uh, QTH just means you know where you live or where you are. Uh, so when somebody asks you where your QTH or what's your QTH, they're really asking where you're from. Uh, in my case, if somebody asks me if my QTH, I'm going to have to tell them it's Overland Park, Kansas. So um, that's just, they're just trying to get an idea of what's going on. But that's the shortcut for that. Uh, another one is QRT. Uh, if people are done talking and they're going to close their station, that's what QRT means. It means I'm done, I'm closing my station, I'm, I'm leaving. Uh, so if they say I'm going QRT, then you're not going to talk to them anymore because they're done. So um, the other one has to do with QSL and QSO. So a QSO, QSO is basically a contact. So if I call you on the radio and we have a conversation, that's called a QSO. We have made contact with each other. In the HF world, uh, you know, that has a little bit more connotation and those contacts are a little bit more difficult. So they have a little bit more uh, gravity or weight to them or, or a little more significance to them. On 2 meters and 440, it's not a big deal. And most people wouldn't even say QSO on the air, but they might. Uh, QSL has to do with the con for the confirming of that contact. So they, they make things called uh, QSL cards, uh, which you can exchange with other hams to uh, signify or to confirm the contact that you've made. There are some people that do these for two meters and 440, especially new ham sometimes, just to kind of get a feel for it. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's kind of an unusual uh, thing to do for a new ham or for any ham on two meters and 440. Uh, but if you, you know, if you want to send somebody a QSL card, hey, go for it. Uh, nothing wrong with that, and they may even send you one back. It is customary when you do, uh, if you want to get a QSL card back from somebody, to send them a self-addressed stamped envelope so that they can then return um, a card to you without incurring any costs. So uh, it's really for your convenience, or for their convenience, not for your convenience. So, uh, but just FYI, just so you know that that's what's going on and that's what those codes are. And there are numbers you can number of other Q codes you can look those up on the internet. Uh, there's a whole list of them. Um, and the whole point of that was back in the Morse code days, um, it it made it easier to send those three letters rather than a whole sentence. Um, about, you know, where's your home or what you're located, where are you located, that sort of thing. Easier just to say what, you know, QTH question mark, and that would, uh, that would solve that. And very few words begin with the letter Q, so it made it a lot easier. And you, once you heard that Q, then you knew you were uh, receiving a Q code and not, not part of a sentence. So um, the other one has to do with QRZ or QRZ. Uh, that basically means, hey, I'm done and I'm listening. I'm ready to um, to um, listen, you know, to go somewhere else or to have another contact. Um, there's also uh, the most significant part of that uh, is a site, a website called qrz.com or qrz.com. That is a ham radio website that has the ability for anyone to go there and search for a call sign. So they can go to, go to the website and look you up. They can enter your call sign and it will return the information uh, that the FCC has on you, which is basically your name and address. Also, there's some details about um, when you were licensed and what license class you have and things like that. Uh, it's always a good idea. You have the opportunity then to go into qrz.com 
and add additional information to your listing. So you can go into your listing, edit that, add some biographical information, things like that. And so when people look you up, they will find more about you. They may, a lot of people put information about their station in there. Uh, they put information about their, what parts of the hobby that they are most interested in, uh, the things that they would find uh, interesting. And, and uh, you can put anything you want to in there. Uh, you can look around and you can find some very elaborate uh, qrz.com pages. Um, and the other thing that that leads us to, and when, when we talk about QSOs and QSLs and things like that, is logs. And a lot of hams, uh, new hams, will ask, you know, do I need to log all my contacts? And the answer is, no, you don't need to. Uh, you can in the HF world, uh, when you get upgraded into general or extra and start doing HF, uh, logging becomes more important because now you're trying to maintain a record of, of you know, what states you've worked, what countries you've worked, things like that. So logging, most people that do HF do log all their contacts. Uh, but if you're only working two meters, 440 on repeaters, uh, there's really no need to log your contacts. You may, uh, you can, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but there's no like FCC requirement or anything like that that you log all your activities on the air. So um, hope that helps. That's just kind of a just kind of random, but uh, uh, there's enough questions out there about all these Q codes and QRZ and things like that. Uh, give you an opportunity to do some of those things and look them up and to learn more about the hobby through doing that. So I uh, hope that was uh, informative for you, and we'll look for you on QRZ.com. So uh, go check out my page. I've had a lot of lookups, and uh, I don't have a whole lot of information there, but hopefully you'll find it useful. But uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, 73.